Am I the asshole for not wanting to have kids? When I was 24, I had a baby with Liz. We trucked along for five years and then we got divorced. The kid, Jane, was very upset by the whole thing. I never really wanted kids and Jane was a mistake. I realized after we had her exactly how child-free I wanted to be. At first, we basically had 50-50 custody while we got it formally figured out. We just worked around our schedules and while we both worked, she spent time with her grandparents. The problem arose when I realized I was dreading having her over. A lot of the time, we did 10 days each, and I had the time of my life on my 10 days off, and I hated having her with me. She was fine before, but now was showing some really shitty behavior to me specifically. Nothing major, but she was really well behaved before. The divorce was finally about to go through, and our legal obligations toward Jane's decided. I told my lawyer that I wanted no custody, full stop, but would pay full and maximum child support instead. My ex Liz and my parents were not happy about this, but I told them I was moving across the country to a city and this was the only way. It's now 10 years later and I'm exceptionally happy and I'm now married again and my wife doesn't want kids either. My daughter Jane is 14 though and has been contacting me through Facebook and my parents. I haven't been in contact with them much because they chose to keep having a relationship with Jane despite me not wanting us to be involved. My wife therefore found out somehow and now she's mad at me. Jane wants to have a relationship with me, but I do not want kids and have made that so clear. I called my ex-wife out on Facebook for allowing my daughter to contact me and for turning my parents against me. But now other family members keep messaging me and telling me to F off. Am I the asshole for deciding I don't want to have kids? When my parents decided to get a divorce, I chose to stay with my dad. He was more financially stable and he also promised to take care of me in the future and help me go through college as long as I graduated. When my grandmother from my mother's side passed away, I received a $30,000 inheritance. And recently, my grandfather from my father's side passed away and left me with $50,000 as well. I was also working part-time jobs, and with all of that, I was able to save enough to comfortably put me through my four years of school. One day, my mom surprised my stepsister and bought her a brand new car. I was kind of shocked because it was way out of their budget because I knew they were struggling financially. When I looked at my bank account, I saw that a majority of my money was missing. I had my mom on all of my accounts because she wanted to monitor to make sure I don't spend too much money. I never would have thought she would have taken this and paid for my stepsister's car. Her reasoning was that my stepsister had a brighter future and had a bigger possibility of going to an Ivy League school and providing for us in the future. Well, I, a student who gets mostly B's and C's, would just take over the family business, so I didn't really need it, and I could always work in the future. My cousin Millie is 30 years old and is an ER nurse. Her birthday was a few days ago, and we planned a birthday prank, which was leaving a fake snake on her cake. All fun and games because we do this every year to every family member. Well, apparently this year Millie didn't want it, so she was pretty pissed at the fact that we didn't. Now, a few days ago while I was in school, I got a call from Millie during lunch. I thought it would be her saying she's picking me up, but it wasn't. She proceeded to tell me that my mother had passed away in a car accident. My heart dropped and I felt like puking. My mother and I don't have the best relationship, but I still love her. Millie began to tell me the details of the death and what exactly happened to the point I hung up on her and called my mother. My mom, who was supposedly at work as a nurse, didn't pick up and I ended up running to the bathroom. I called my dad, bawling my eyes out and telling him what happened. He didn't understand what I was talking about because he called my mom right before I called. He made me explain everything and understandably he was pissed. He picked me up from school and called my mom in the car just to prove that she was alive and okay. That night my aunt, who's not Millie's mom, called a meeting to her house and we all talked it out. They were all pretty much disgusted with Millie as she tried to justify her choices, but she ended up apologizing. I got up and I stated that I didn't ever want to talk to her again. Now Millie is engaged. Her wedding is coming up soon and I was supposed to be a flower girl. I'm 15, but they wanted me to be a part of it. So now I have pulled out of the wedding, which is what Millie is worried about. She doesn't want people to question where I was and started to yell at me for being petty. My dad took me home and blocked Millie on everything. Her fiancé, who I'm very close to, ended up messaging me, asking me to come, and I told him no, and what his fiancé did was disgusting. He said, while what Millie did was wrong for doing it at school, it was just a prank, and I blew up at him. She told me my mother was dead. Fucking dead. He sounded generally confused and asked me what the hell I was talking about. I told him what happened, and turns out Millie and her mother lied to him and said that Millie just sent a gory picture to me while I was at school. Next thing I knew, he left to go stay with his mother and apologized to me. Now I'm getting blamed for ruining Millie's relationship. I'm not talking to her or her mother, but am I the asshole? I'm 24 years old and I recently married my childhood sweetheart. We had a pretty small wedding due to the global situation, but it was planned well in advance so we didn't cancel, just kept it to family. And we planned to have a party with everyone else at a later date. For some background on my husband, his parents had him pretty young. They were both 18 and 19 and he has a very close family. Our wedding reception was quite intimate, but we had the traditional speeches planned. Father of the bride, best man, which was my husband's brother, and the groom. It was only the day before that my mother-in-law asked if she could have the mic to say a few words when we sat down to eat. And we said this would be great. Big mistake. Stupid us. We figured she would talk about us at our wedding, so we never asked what she planned to say. 
She announced to all of our guests that she's expecting a baby. She's still pretty young and very healthy, but it was a huge shock that just completely took over the night. What's even worse for me is that I'm also pregnant and we plan to announce it at the wedding, but I told my husband to just leave it out of his speech. Everything felt a bit sour for me after that. After the wedding, I didn't speak to my mother-in-law for a few days and I got a call from her sister to ask what's up. I explained that I felt like the attention was taken away from us without our permission. I would have said no if I knew she was going to announce her pregnancy. And it was unfair to bring that on us. Apparently, I ruined my own wedding because it was obvious to all the guests I was upset about the good news and I was being totally selfish. Maybe I was, but it was my wedding day that was already ruined by a pandemic. My husband is on my side, though. He clearly feels a bit uncomfortable telling his mom that, which I get. I don't want to have this argument directly with a pregnant woman either. The rest of the family is split down the middle, my side and his, because it was such a close family event anyway, we'd all need some happiness. Now I'm starting to wonder if I overreacted and spoiled everything. The petty side of me wants me to announce my pregnancy at her baby shower. I know it would be wrong, but I want her to get a taste of her own medicine of what she did to me on my wedding day. So am I the asshole for trying to ruin her special day because she ruined mine? I got my fiance and I are getting married this September. The issue lies with the dress code. We have been clear from the beginning that this is going to be a white tie event. So, of course, there are strict rules attached to that. One thing we are really looking forward to is our wedding shoot. We have spent a large amount of our own money on a photographer. The photographer is highly, highly sought after in our area, and we were lucky to book him last year in advance. So naturally, we are taking this seriously. The invitations we sent explicitly told our guests what we would be expecting from them. White tie, no unnaturally dyed hair, no visible tattoos or piercings, and that they were free to decline the invitation if they had a problem with this. We also sent everybody who RSVP'd a reminder over email several weeks ago repeating this instruction. This is going to be fine until one of our mothers has recently posted on Facebook a picture of a cocktail-style dress she wants to wear on the day. Of course, this isn't included in our dress code, so we informed her right away that the dress would be unacceptable. Unfortunately, this has caused a lot of unnecessary drama throughout both of our families and even some friends. Both set of parents, cousins, some siblings, and many more people have messaged us privately to ask us to relax on our dress code and allow them to be flexible. We are hosting a private event where we will be able to set the rules. Having been to other weddings over the years, we have fully complied with the wishes of the marrying couple, and we do not see why we should not be given the same treatment. Since we made this clear, we've been called assholes by people around us. However, in our opinion, this is our wedding, and we've been clear about our preferences all along. We have even told our guests that if anyone has a problem with this, they are free to drop out even though we will still be paying for their seats now and not attend. Am I the asshole for having a dress code at our wedding? I got married four years ago, and my husband and his family are many times over millionaires. My family is just middle class. Our wedding costs around 700 k paid by him and his parents. My parents gave me a flat fee of 10 k for a dress, which they are also giving to my sister, too. My sister and her fiancé are lower class. She has 170 k in student loan, while he has 110. They have 18 k in medical debt and 35 k in credit card debt. Well, last night was my sister's birthday dinner, and she announced she was engaged and wanted help paying for her wedding. She gave me a spreadsheet of how much she was going to need for her dream wedding. Anyways, her dream wedding is supposed to cost 100 k and as her only sister, I need to step up and help pay for her wedding since her parents are only giving her 10 k for a dress. She said she needs me to give her at least 70 k since I'm rich now. When I told her I'm not giving her 70 k she cried and said it wasn't fair how I get whatever I want. When she realized I wasn't going to budge, she broke down about how I'm just using motherhood to be greedy and lazy. I have two-year-old twins. I eventually told her I wasn't going to be bullied into giving her 70 k She's 15 weeks pregnant, hence why she's in a rush to be married right away. When I tried to leave, she just snapped and said I'm a bad mother since my mother-in-law stays over often to help. Anyway, she screamed about how I lied about my postpartum depression for the first few months after giving birth and it wasn't real and I only used it to cover up how much of a terrible mother I am an even worse wife since I wasn't well enough for intercourse for a few months. I told my mom and my mom told her. I feel bad for her since I know she's struggling, but I hate her for saying that kind of stuff in front of strangers. My brother, who's usually neutral, says I should forgive her since she's stressed from crippling debt and has two kids and a third on the way. She's claimed I'm jealous of her since she's younger. She's 25 and I'm 33. And now, since I'm over 30, my husband is probably cheating on me with the housekeeper and nanny for all I know since I'm never home. I have helpers twice a week, mostly just to go to the salon with my friends and weekly day night. So a few days ago, I went to stay in a hotel with my friends near the beach. We ended up going outside to tan for about two hours. Now, my friends are used to tanning, but I haven't tanned since last summer. And even then, I barely did. Because I always get sunburnt. So two days ago was when we were tanning. And also the same day we got home. I felt fine when we got back home. The only thing that hurt me was the intense sunburn all over my entire body. Now yesterday, I started feeling really nauseous. I ate a salad around 4 o'clock, and then around 9 o'clock I ate a bag of apples. I felt so sick I decided to take a Tylenol. Not even 3 minutes after I took the Tylenol, I ended up throwing it up. 
All last night, I was a complete mess. My mom ended up sleeping in my bed with me just to take care of me. If you have really fair skin like me, always make sure that you put on a lot of sunblock. Because what I experienced last night and what I'm still experiencing is sun poisoning. So make sure you guys stay safe this summer, load up on the sunscreen, and just sit in the shade. Story of the time my neighbor tried to pierce my belly button when I was eight. So you guys know an awful lot about, you know, my neighbor's situation. She was known as the bully of our street. So anyway, one day she's like, okay, we're going to play kickball. And I hated playing kickball because you know what kickball was to her? Having me stand behind a tree while she kicked the ball at me repeatedly. And you know why I had to stand behind a tree? So that neither of our parents would be able to see what she was doing. So obviously I was like, no, I don't want to play kickball. And she was like, we'll either play kickball or we'll play house. And I was like, okay, let's play house. So we go up to her room unsupervised with the door closed. And she pulls out her toenail clipper. And she tells me to pull up my shirt. I was like, absolutely not until you tell me what you're doing with that toenail clipper in your hand. She started convincing me that it wouldn't hurt and that it'll be a pretty belly ring when we're done. And I didn't know what a belly ring was. And she said an earring for your belly button. So I was like, oh, okay, word. Didn't go home with a belly ring.